Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Reina. If you're new here, then welcome. Today we're finally diving into all of my tinted sunscreens that are available in Australia, either they're mineral or chemical sunscreens. Um, I actually have all of these uh, products featured in my previous videos because I have a whole playlist, the ones I reviewed in 2020 and a couple that I just recently reviewed in 2021. So if you want to see each individual products that I compare with other sunscreens at the time, then I'll make sure to leave that playlist somewhere so you can check it out. Till today, I've got 12 tinted sunscreen. I feel like it's about time that I put these together and review them separately in this particular category and tell you guys my thoughts which are the ones I don't really like what are the ones that I really enjoy that you can consider purchase either they're mineral or chemical sunscreens if this video sounds like something you're interested in maybe consider giving me a like and subscribe down below without further ado let's just dive into it I did separate them into three big categories don't recommend eh. It's okay. And the recommended one into two subcategories. Some are good, but for other reasons, maybe they're not TGA regulated or they're not that available, easily accessed in Australia. And the ones that we can find it every day in the supermarket, in the chemist. Don't worry, I'll leave the timestamps down below. So if you want to check particular categories first, let's just click through them. But don't forget to check the rest so you know which one to avoid and the differences between all these. So first off, I've got three that I don't recommend. And there are two are actually mineral sunscreens. So I think it's good that I pointed out because I know mineral sunscreens is something people are looking after these days over the chemical ones purely because of the ingredients. Some of the chemical sunscreens ingredients can seem to be absorbed and causing sensitivities and hormone issues you know as we know more about these ingredients and we learn the harmful effects as well so that makes everything improve a bit better I like the whole idea that we start challenging the things I've been using so you know you can make improvement so the one that I think among all three like the least is the natural instinct tinted face natural sunscreen SPF 30 UVA UVB bulk spectrum three hours water resistance this one contains 22% zinc oxide. First big problem with is the formula. It's really separated in the tube. I know you have to shake it well, but you also have to squeeze the tube quite hard back and forth to mix the product together before you apply it onto your face. When it comes to tinted sunscreen, one of the big issue is how about the shades? What are the availabilities? What does the shade looks like on different skin tones? Unfortunately, they only have one shade, so there's no true. There's no other choices, and I have a light to medium skin tone, so I think I'm actually quite good, like I'm sitting right in the middle of the shade range or towards on the lighter side, but I can speak for, I can, I can be used as a reference to help fair skin or even darker skin to see how it's going to work on your face. So this one, the shade is darker than my skin, so you know if you're having a darker skin, you might enjoy it better. If you're a lighter skin tone, you might think it's a disadvantage point. To me, it's a little bit too dark and it's actually a little bit too red. I don't know why, but a lot of tinted sunscreens are seems to having a reddish undertone rather than a yellow undertone. I per prefer a neutral or yellow undertone. So the shade itself is not having a lot of variety and it's not working well for me personally. And it's only containing SPF 30, so it's not a 50 that I like to have. And that's the other thing. There's so many points that I'm bringing out now. Because these sunscreens got a tint, so we tend to use them as a foundation or tinted moisturizer. That means you sometimes don't apply enough because you want a nice thin layer. You don't want adding on too much of that color onto your face and making a huge difference to the rest of your body. So a higher SPF is really what I'm going for, if possible. So SPF 30, not so impressive. Formula-wise, uh, not so easy to work with. Shade-wise, too dark for me, not a good variety. And it seems to be sliding around. Every time when I wear a mask at work, oh my gosh, it literally transferred every single bit of the sunscreen onto the mask and when I take it off you see a huge differences in color so that is not something that I guess particular at these days when we're wearing masks a lot more than we're used to that you would like to have 
when you go outside. So overall speaking, I really don't recommend this one. Another mineral sunscreen is from the brand Suking. So this is a very popular Australian brand. And I saw a video from YouTube like shop with me at Target and they have a whole Suking line there at Target. I believe they're either in America or Canada. So I'm so proud the Suking brand itself is going outside and it's the Suking Sun Care SPF 30 Sheer Touch Tinted Sunscreen UV UVB ball spectrum protection. A contains 21.5 zinc oxide, and I've got in a color light to medium. They do have a color medium to dark. I like how they try to include more shade ranges, but I'll say the light to medium one is just a smidge lighter than the natural instinct that I mentioned so it's still not great I don't blame it it's not a cosmetic product but you know the more the better I know Australian Botanic Gold is increasing they have a lot of shades now which is a brilliant thing to do customers are really gonna benefit from bringing the shades and it's gonna help people to enjoy using sunscreen a lot more one big issue with this one is the scent and I noticed when I reviewed it so many of you guys had a similar problem it is so strong it's like you sink yourself into a metal tin and it's enclosed by it it's just so so strong I feel like it can give us a bit of a headache if you're quite sensitive it lasts for about 10 minutes and then it would go away the formula itself is also very liquidy so I really recommend you shake it well if it's if you don't use this every day and you set it aside for a little while shake it well very well before you use it again because it tend to be separated a little bit because um, due to its liquid formula it blends onto the face easily it's not stinging around my eyes although I did notice some people mention it caused the sting I think it might actually just because of the scent it got so this is a question marks here but I worked out fine without any irritations it seems to be sliding around my face as I wear it throughout the day so if you're only wearing this for a couple hours just you know have a quick run and come back and that's when I wanted to use a tinted moisturizer that's fine but if you're gonna wear it for a long day particularly if it's an important day uh -uh, don't go for this one because you're not gonna like it by the end of the day and when you're outside you actually have no control to fix the problem Overall speaking, I still have better versions of it, so yeah, no, I really don't recommend. And the scent that I've got, uh, really not pleasant. And the last one on the list from this category is the Cancer Console Face Day Wear Moisturizer Matte in the color Light Tint. I believe they do have another uh, darker shade, maybe two darker shades. This is a chemical sunscreen, contains SPF 50 plus UVA UVB ball spectrum protection. It is suitable for sensitive skin and it is a fragrance free version, contain aloe vera and vitamin E. What I really don't like about this one is for a chemical sunscreen, if it got a tint, I would assume it's for even your skin tone, giving a bit of coverage. Otherwise, why would you add tint into a chemical sunscreen? You don't need to because there's no white cast, not like mineral sunscreens. This one doesn't give any coverage, so the tint itself is really for no reason. Like, I don't see the point of why to having this. And also, it is really hard to be blended into your skin. It comes with a grayish lotion texture, and it always reminds me the L'Oreal Magic BB Cream. So as you blend the product onto your face, color starts to show, and once it shows, it will stay on your face and goes nowhere. So you really need to work it quick enough and apply the even amount onto your face. If you try to move it once the color appears, it's gonna go very patchy. I have to wash my face a few times when I try this out. So the way I do is, it's a very thin layer, dab it around your face again and again and again. Repeat the process until I have a good amount of sunscreen. If you are in a rush, in a hurry, don't bother try this. They do have a better one I'm gonna mention in a minute. I think that works way, way better. Um, I guess the only reason why they contain this in their range is because this is a TGA regulated product. The one also from their face day wear moisturizer, which I will be recommending, unfortunately is considered as a BB cream, so it's a cosmetic product in Australia. But I'll talk about why I still recommend those ones I get there. That was all the ones I don't recommend. Now let's move into the middle category. I feel like, hmm, it's okay, but will I repurchase? No, would I recommend? 
probably not. First one I'm going to talk about is the supermarket brand Coles Tinted Facial Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. This one gives UVA, UVB, both spectrum protection. It claims to be a mattifying and hydrating formula with aloe vera and vitamin E. It is a fragrance free version and gives 4 hours water resistance. This uh, got the shade says medium here, but I don't think they have any other shades. So maybe they were planning to come up with more shades and end up not be able to. Maybe it's not selling well or something. But the medium shade is actually quite dark, pretty much on par with the natural instant that I just mentioned. I have light to medium skin again so for me it's a bit too much but this is really depends on your skin tone. What I like about this product is first of all it's fragrance free version and it's available from Coats from its house brand. Super super affordable and it's very moisturizing on the face to a point that I don't think it can be mattified like at all. It's very very shiny so if you do have a dry skin you will really benefit from the hydrating ingredients here the aloe vera and vitamin e i have normal two combination sort of skin type my t-zone is quite oily it was a little bit too much and because the shade was darker than my skin tone so it did made everything just a little bit more greasier it wor it's workable with setting powder, you know, lighten it up and or with a blotting paper just to absorb excessive oil. Um, but I just don't think it's going to be something that I really purchase. And in terms of tinted sunscreen, I think a shade, a good matching shade is quite important. Apparently this is not the one. But if you're having a darker, drier skin or on a budget, I mean this is from the supermarket. So. You know, it's 50-50, that's what I call about these categories. Another one that is a actually quite high-end, that I almost gonna put it into the not recommending category, and then I had another think. I think it's better than that category. So this is the Aspect Sun SPF 50 CC Cream, 4 hours water resistance. So this is a chemical sunscreen, and I guess they use the CC Cream means they are correcting your skin, even your skin tone, adding a bit of tint, uh, also giving a high UVA UV protection. A tried but it did not work. I like how it gives a pump and this one is expensive. This might be the most expensive one. I don't know which one is more expensive, Polasteroid or Aspect. So they're pretty on board. So this is more for a department store price sunscreen. You do get 75 mils and it is a product approved TGA regulation. So I was actually having high hope about this. If it can also give a bit of color correction, a bit of coverage, then I will be really, really enjoying this. Unfortunately, no, it didn't. The tint itself feels like nothing. It did change my skin color. I think that's the only thing it did. Not in a pleasant way. I feel like my skin look a little bit darker, but when you squeeze pump the product out, it's not as red as the other ones that just mentioned. So I think they're having a better formula in terms of the tint, but for a such a high press tech to sunscreen, I wish they have more shades to choose from. So you're really matching and trying to achieve the claims it says here with this even skin tone formula. If you don't even have a shade range to choose from, how can you even all types of skin tone? It's impossible to achieve. Finish is very greasy, it's quite oily, it's not stinging. Um, I think it did a little bit of transfer if you don't apply any setting powder afterwards. I just don't think it worth the money and with the little coverage that it gives Mm, the application of this one is quick and easy, but the finish is mm, really disappointed. And the last but the least from this category is the Avin Unifying Care SPF 30 Antioxidant. So this is not a TGA approved product. I actually think this one could be just a tinted moisturizer with SPF. I thought it was a sunscreen because it was listed under like Priceline sunscreen category when you shop online. I think that's where I got mixed up and confused. I do have a video talking all about the TGA regulations and that's why I can be certain to say this is not a TGA regulated sunscreen so if you want to know a little bit more about those basic questions I'll make sure to leave that video somewhere um, 
This one is actually quite similar to the Aspect one I just mentioned, and it only contains SPF 30, so that's not the highest one. There's no other shades available for you to choose from, so this is again universal shade, I hope. It's actually working alright. It's a little bit lighter than the Aspect, so I think it's more suitable for a slightly fair skin tone, but it provides no coverage. Like, I don't understand why you don't add a bit for coverage when you give a chemical sunscreen. I get it for the mineral sunscreen, all you were focusing was getting rid of the white cast and then you can't actually achieve that coverage because it's already thick enough as a physical shield. But chemical sunscreen, I'm sure you can work a little bit better and this is a good brand. So again, I was having high hopes and it's not that affordable. This one got 40 mils in here. I think the price I bought was around $20 and that's when they had either 40% off or half price sale. So for a full price, this is almost like close to $50. And with no coverage, a tint with only SPF 30, not approving TGA, I probably don't recommend. But again, I think it's workable as a sunscreen. I do trust it got SPF because it's a brand that I trust, but it doesn't mean that I'm impressed. Finally, let's dive into the categories that I do recommend. Don't worry, there are six of them I recommend, so I'm sure there's one that you're gonna like. Um, what should I say? Let's talk about the ones that, that I think it's a bit tricky for you guys to get, so I'll just quickly get it out of the way. This is the um, Australian Gold Botanic Sunscreen Tinted Face SPF 50 Bought Spectrum. This is their old version. I mentioned they do came out with new shade, which I so thrilled. I almost wanted to get all of them, but you know what? You can't get it here in Australia. This particular bottle, I got it from my friend who study in America, and she shipped it all the way here as a gift that I requested. So thank you very much. But I know it's quite tricky, particularly during a pandemic. It's even Dif more, it's even more difficult to get things um, shipped overseas and a lot of parcels were lost. Like I had a couple that were lost and I completely understand. I know how tricky things can be. So yeah, that is why I will quickly mention this. I remember I said in the previous review video, this is for like a dupe for the Polo's Choice ones. I pretty much stands everything that I said in that last video. It works well on the face. It gives 80 minutes water resistant. It is a chemical sunscreen. Oh no, it is a mineral sunscreen. Contains 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide. Uh, it does seems to be sliding around just a smidge at the very end of the day. So it holds much pretty well for the majority of the days and if you set it with a powder then you won't notice this issue it's only when you wear it by yourself because it does give this physical shield and that's one biggest tricky thing with mineral sunscreens and I try not to touch my face as much if I'm applying mineral sunscreen and mineral sunscreen is gonna sit on your surface of the skin for the entire time when they're protecting you from the sun damage I forgot to mention this is also hypoallergic frequency -free Free, PABA free, not testing on animals, and it's rape friendly, also tested by dermatologists and pediatricians, although that doesn't mean they recommend it, it just means they test it. Like, I can test it, and then it's like tested by a medical technician, it's just no one cares my title because it's not related to the skincare um, industry. But that's being said, it feels very moisturizing on the face, and with more shades, it's actually gonna suit more people with different skin tones. But I just found it's so tricky to get it here in Australia and we do have very similar things here so maybe we don't have to feel bad, feel sad about not getting this in Australia because we do have some good ones as well. Next let's talk about the Polar's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Tinted Base SPF 30. This one got 13% zinc oxide and also contains antioxidant plus Vesverotrols. It says it's suitable for normal to oily combination skin and create a sheer natural tint for all skin tones. I did a recent review a half face using this, half face using an invisible zinc product that I'm just gonna mention in a minute. So if you want to see the actual application on the face and how it looks in comparison, I'll make sure to leave that video somewhere so you can check it out after this. Um, this unfortunately is not regulated under TGA and same here with the Australian 
Australian book can you go you just can't get this here in Australia but you can still buy Polo's Choice it is selling under a tinted base so it's a cosmetic product for me to figure out the concentration you notice here I literally peeled this off and I can see what was behind this so it showed me we put we've got 13% of zinc oxide so here's where I'm going to mention the differences between regulated and the TGA or not Sunscreens in Australia are regulated under TGA. This is the regulation that we also regulate all the prescription medications, blood products, all the medical devices. So you can see sunscreen is considered as a therapeutic good here in Australia. Um, so it is having a little bit of restricted sort of regulation and that is also why some of the very popular brands, these two, are either not available or not considered as TGA product for a few couple of reasons. It could be because it's quite expensive, it takes time, and it's you know going through all the process and paperwork and it's not worth it. They can just still have the same product with a different label and people still enjoy it because it's passing FDA or it contains some of the ingredients that they either don't want to change the formula or they have to keep the same formula to make sure they have the same performance but it's an ingredient that TGA does not approve. Don't know which one's the reason but these are the possibilities and there are also some other reasons that I might not think of but I think these two are the main reasons. Doesn't mean this is a bad one because like I said both of these pass FDAs so it is still regulated under certain governmental guidelines for sunscreens. So I do trust the SPF values here but if you are someone really relying on TGA because I believe there's a reason why there's a regulation here otherwise they shouldn't be existing the first place. I still really enjoy this product and it saved me so many mornings when I want to skip my makeup steps or I just ran late and I don't have the time to do primers, foundations, concealers. It's a quick tinted moisturizer and I really enjoy the um, skincare ingredients in here. It feels very moisturized, very lightweight and it doesn't leave a shiny finish. It is sheer but it's not tacky and it's not sliding around, not sticking around my eyes and so many people really love this and raved about it. It's one of the best selling products from Polo's Toys I believe. Um, it's just a little bit expensive here in Australia. I mean it's not very very affordable overseas either but it's also quite tricky to get you can only buy it online and they do currently have a long time 25% off their first item not the first time you purchase it's just the first product that you got from that order it's gonna be 25% off so it's pretty good one if you want to give it a go it's not gonna you don't have to pay for full price and then we've got the Cancer Console Face Day Wear BB Cream Matte. They also contains two or three shades, I can't remember exactly. I've got in the light tint. So this claims to be a lightweight three-in-one cream, providing natural coverage, hydration, and very high protection. It is a chemical sunscreen and gives SPF 50 plus, UVA, UVB ball spectrum. It helps to even the skin tones and it's got some like uh, natural skincare ingredients. I remember they got some oils in here just to moisturize it uh, like jojoba seed oils yes sika fruit oils really to uh, all of us as well to hydrate and moisturize and calm the skin I really really enjoy this although this is not a TGA approved but I think it works so similar to Polo's Choice they are different mineral sunscreen chemical sunscreen SPF 30 SPF 50 non-TGA that's one thing in common this is I can't remember how much around 50 maybe this is $10 or less when they're on half price sales so I will probably repurchase this one in the future it's just so easy to pick another bottle of these and I know it's I just feel like if I can achieve the same sort of finish I actually think Cancer Console may be having a better coverage because it is more designed as a BB cream and it claims to have this natural coverage I think it really achieves it and it is hydrating and it contains a higher SPS as well so that's where I have the trust of the brand in general so I do trust the SPF claims if you're someone really need that reassurance from TGA maybe we'll look for the next three products I'm gonna mention because they're all mineral sunscreen and they're all 
all tinted and they're all passing TGA regulation. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Banana Boat Simple Lip Protect Sensitive Face Tinted SPF 50 Plus. This is a hypoallergic oil-free formula, gives UVA, UVB, broad spectrum, and a two hours water resistant. It contains 25% zinc oxide. I quite like this bottle. This is a 50 gram bottle, and the Polar's Toy is 60 ml. You see the difference, only 10 mils, but this is so much travel friendly. Unfortunately, it only comes within one shade to choose from. The good thing is the shade itself really works like a BB cream. So if you use the Korean BB cream before, you realize they don't have good range anyway. So it comes with this grayish color and once you blend on your skin, unless you're having really, really dark skin, it will leave that lavender ashy gray. Otherwise, I think for the majority of the light, fair light, light to medium or even medium skin tone, a, you can get away with the shade. It feels very, very moisturizing and I like how it's an oil-free formula so it won't clock into the pores and it's got a quite high concentration it is a bit greasy and seems to be a little bit tacky just to use it by itself so I do suggest just pat it with a paper to absorb the oil or set it with a setting powder to really hold everything in place this is a sunscreen that I think if you don't reapply it every couple hours and just solely rely on it, it will start to sliding around at the end of the day. So we should be reapplying it anyway. If you do that, then you wouldn't have the problem of peeling because you're constantly setting the product back onto your face. Don't give the chance for the product to be moved around. I quite enjoy this, but I actually like the not tinted clear version better than the tinted one. I think the tint does change the formula a little bit more greasier, but we're talking about tinted versions here. So if you're asking me to choose in between the two banana boat, I say go for the clear, but this is also very, very affordable. More cheaper than the other two I'm gonna mention in a minute. And so if you're on a budget, maybe consider give this one a go. And the last but the least, there are two products here from the Invisible Zinc Sheer Defense and their Tinted Daywear. I really don't know which one is better than the other, so I'm just going to talk about the SPF 30 first. This is their Tinted Daywear Mineral Sheer SPF 30 in the color light. I believe they have one or two shades. I can't remember how many shades they've got. It gives full spectrum UVA, UVB protection, moisturize and protects the skin, and it contains 20 20, uh, it contains 18% zinc oxide. So when I did the side-by-side -side sunscreen battle, I put one side of uh, Polar's Choice and the other side with this one because I think they're actually very, very similar. Both um, mineral sunscreen contain SPF 30 with a bit of a skincare ingredients, but this definitely is more uh, glowy finish. You can tell from that review video, it's more glowy, more tacky, and it's a darker shade compared to the Polar's Toy, although this is in the color light. And the gray sea feeling also leave a bit of more heaviness compared to the Polar's Choice. So there is a reason why this one is a little bit more expensive but don't you forget it contains 18% so the higher concentration will all emphasize the point that I just mentioned and that is also why it's tricky to work have a good balance of the concentration of the active ingredients as well as the like lovely lightweight experience on your face so I am not mad about this one I still really enjoyed it but if you ask me if I would repurchase this it's probably not only because we do have a SPF 50 why would I go for SPF 30 when there is SPF 50 so this is their invisible zinc sheer defense tinted moisturizer SPF 50 I've got in a shade medium I'll show you a photo so you can see the color differences this one says it's a sensitive skin for formula lightweight mineral shield gives full spectrum uva uvb protection and two hours water resistance we have 27 percent zinc oxide in here this could be the one having the highest um, active ingredients of zinc oxide if i am correct it definitely comes a little bit more thicker formula and i think it's probably the thickest you do have to take your time to apply this. It's not one of those so easy blend without thinking. You just need to focus yourself 
couple minutes applying this onto your face and then you should be all good to go. The finish of these two invisible zinc ones are very similar. They both have that sort of uh, nice sheer glow finish, not just sheer but a little bit glowing shiny as well. I do recommend to set it with a powder on both sides. I still blend this with my finger. It doesn't require any like very difficult application method. You just need to take your time to evenly blend it out because it's got a tint. Once it sets, it works pretty well. To me, I just think if I'm applying something, I would go for a higher SPF. But if you prefer a more runnier lotion texture, well, SPF 30 is not bad. So that's completely up to your preferences and what sort of SPF you are after. All right, so that is everything for today's video. My thoughts and ranking for the 12 tinted Australian sunscreens here. I hope you really enjoyed it and it bring you some information, help you to choose some products or exclude some of the ones that you might be considered purchase. Maybe they're not worth it. Um, if you liked today's video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribe down below. Leave your comments down below if there's more tinted sunscreen that you want me to try or you found they're working really good or even better than the ones I'm recommending. Or if you have a different opinion on the product that I mentioned today, we can all help each other out maybe you can help me find a better way and making this product works better on my skin uh, anyway I hope you all had had a great day let's stay safe and stay positive I'll see you guys in my next video bye